Hey guys, welcome back. We're doing another live stream today. Um, these things are coming, becoming uh, pretty popular. Um, they've been done uh, better than I thought they would, and uh, people really seem to like the information that we're putting out here too. So, just gonna keep up with it. Um, summer has hit. It's hot here in Utah. Um, <laughs> I'm uh, luckily down here in the basement uh, with the air conditioning on and it feels quite nice but and my shop is also air conditioned as well so um, we're gonna just enjoy a lot of building this summer hopefully and uh, you guys will be along for the ride if you want to be. Um, if you guys been keeping up uh, I just put out a, a video for making a plectrum banjo neck which I think is really cool so uh, check that one out if you haven't already and uh, you know like always like and subscribe and all that stuff um, we're working on this ES335 again today and uh, I think it looks really good uh, as you can see right here in the picture um, it's looking a lot better than I thought it would end up um, it's not a true absolute ES335 it's kind of my interpretation of one so uh, um, we're just going to keep on with it. Um, what I would planned to do today was to cut that neck pocket, um, but I think we're going to hold off on that because I really need to do a little bit more work to determine the exact right neck angle that I want. I think what we're going to do is we're going to model the bridge and, uh, and tr really try to model everything out so that we get a really precise neck um, angle on this one. So uh, there's gonna, we're going to have to make some changes to get that to happen, so uh, I'll have to work on that a little bit through the week. Um, but I've been getting a lot of questions. We did that one of the one of the early videos. We talked about how do, doing the transition from the back of the neck into the heel. But I keep getting a lot of questions about that same transition on the, the headstock to the neck. And it's actually the one to the heel is a little bit trickier, but there's some techniques that I use. Um, when connecting to the headstock that I think are useful. So um, let's just hop over here in a fusion and get started. So this is where we left off and uh, it's looking pretty nice. Uh, get a little sip of tea there. Hope you guys got a beverage while you were watching here. So um, it's looking pretty good. Um, we're gonna have to figure out this neck angle. Like right, you can see right now it's just straight flat and we're gonna have to determine that proper neck angle. Um, I've seen ES-335s, they really vary a great deal. <laughs> so what we're going to do is, um, instead of doing that, I'm going to go over um, the neck modeling stuff that we did here. And I've got I've set up another, another um, file here. Um, just kind of, it's the same file, but it's gone back in time. I just went back into the timeline, eliminated the design history, and then started it again. So we still have our design history down here in the bottom but it started from this one solid point. So I have a number of sketches in here. So I, I, I have the headstock sketch and I put that on the headstock angle that I want. So just by creating a plane on angle off of this first fret line. And then, um, then I've got a series of sketches. This is just the back of the neck shape, um, the heel, the flat part of the heel here, and then the rounded part of the heel and then the other contour for the neck. So this is what you need to start out. Um, so th these frets and the fretboard, uh, I generated that with my, um, I wrote a little, uh, a little add-in um, that I use for doing that. And it allows me to, if I have to do something historical that has a different constant for the fret spacing, um, I can alter that. And if anyone's interested in that, you know, maybe I'll put it up on Patreon. Um, like always, I'll probably put this one up on Patreon just as another file for you guys to download and look at if you want to follow along that way. So um, when I when I first did this, and actually the model that we're working off of, um, the way I do this, so let's get rid of some a bunch of these that are all in the way. Really all we need is this one for right now. I'm just going to create a new sketch on the same surface. I'm going to project out these lines. Then I'm going to get rid of everything else so we don't because we don't need that. So so I'm just going to oops. Okay. So I'm just going to make some lines so I can get a center point between these two. 
and I'm going to draw a line straight down the center. So you want it to project out a decent ways from these, but not um, that far, really. So I'm going to make another line here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make the, them... Oops. So now I have these three lines, I'm going to mirror them over to the other side. Okay. So lock those all in place and finish the sketch. So now we've got some more stuff to work from here. Um, I don't really need this one anymore. So what we're going to do, we'll start off with the headstock. We'll just extrude that out, negative 0.5, pretty standard dimension for the for that. We're already in uh, the surface area here, so I'll just, I'll just select this and delete it. Because I don't want, I don't really want that face, and I don't really need these faces either. And then, uh, uh, let's continue lofting, and then we'll come back to that head, that transition here at the back of the headstock. So I just like to loft. Oh, I got some sketches in the way here. These are just lofts to fill in these faces. I need to fill in this face right here, so I'll just use patch to fill in that one. So um, really quickly, I'll just stitch these all together just to get them in, down into one surface. I'm gonna do another loft here for the back of the neck. And stitch that up. Okay, so there's our starting point. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to transit just like we did on the heel before we're going to, well, we need one more sketch here. Let's, let's finish that up first. So if you use the look at tool and then that surface, you get straight on it. I'm going to create a sketch on that face and I'm going to project the outline of that face. So I want to make a line. Oops. So I'm going to dimension that from here. I'm going to go 0.6. Uh, let's go 0.75. So what I'm really looking to do here is try to find a face. So as you can see, the heel right here, it's higher than there. So we kind of want to come across. So it looks to me like we need to go even a little bit more. Oh geez, that's a little out of control. So let's change that to one. Okay, 
Um, I'm going to create another line here through the center points. And we're going to do a spline. Oh, I don't know why that zoom keeps going wonky on me. Uh, 0.4. So let's see where that looks. Go to this front face. And it's still a little bit. So let's increase that a little bit. Lost it. Okay, that should do it. Um, I'm going to go back to solid here. I'm going to extrude this from both sides just a little bit and I'm going to change it to cut I'm going to remove that. Okay, so now we have the, all the shapes we really need to get this done. So we're going to create another sketch and I like to cr do this on uh, the highest surface plane which is the back of the heel here and then we're going to use this Project include, project to surface. So it's going to ask for the faces you want to project to, which are all of these. And then the curves you want to select, um, project, sorry, are these four that we drew earlier. And then we're going to do a direction. And I like to just use this XY plane, and that projects them straight up like that. So now we have those. We already went over the heel, but we'll just do the neck here really quick. Um, how many minutes are we in? We're already 12 minutes in. Wow. Oh, Weedy Guitar Studios on here. Hey, nice to see ya. If you guys have any questions on what I'm doing here, you know, feel free to pop it into the comments or ask a question or anything like that. So once again, just a fit point spline. And from this one, I, I want to go to this corner right here, which we didn't really project to, but um, you really want this to be one continuous curve that you're that you're running these lines to, so that's just how I'm going to do it. So now we're going to make those tangent to the curves that we're working with. And on these ones, you want it to be tangent. So this edge one, we can't do tangent to both sides. But the rest of them, we're going to do tangent to both sides. Okay, while we're here, we're going to just go ahead and do these heel ones at the same time. Um, let's see how I'm going to come right up to there, I believe. Yep, that works. Oop, didn't get that one right in place. Okay, uh, we might have a problem here with the way this is connecting, so I'm trying to figure this out really quick, but okay, we're, there we got those. 
We're gonna do the same thing tangent, but these just all go tangent to one side, not both sides, because you want kind of a more crisp edge. Okay, so now we got those, we're just gonna start lofting. We go back to surface. We're gonna get a loft tool out here. Um, if we're lucky, we'll be able to loft this one all the way across. Um, add the rails, which is this rail and this rail. Looks good right there. Um, let's do the same thing down here, see if we can get that to happen on the bottom. Oh, doesn't like that, so let's cut out some of these. Hmm. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> so some th there's a complication right here with this corner as it meets this corner. And uh, I think that's where our problem's happening. We got a problem here. Okay. Okay, there we go. Got it. On that side, I'll do the other one. Okay, get rid of these sketches. Um, we're going to do stitching, stitch these all together. Um, we're going to do a patch. Just got to do four patches here to get these sealed up. What we're doing is we're creating a watertight surface. And when you stitch together watertight surfaces in Fusion, um, see here, I'll show you the difference. So we've got all of these surfaces over here. And when we go to inspect, we can use the sectional, oh, wrong one. Sectional analysis is what we're gonna do. Um, and we're just gonna go off this plane right here. So you can see this thing is hollow in the inside, right? Um, but we want it to be a solid. Um, so what we're gonna do is just stitch these all together. And since they're all watertight, um, when we stitch them together, if you look here on in this corner right here, you can see these bodies that are all together, then they're all surfaces. When we stitch them together, they all become a solid. So now we have a solid here um, that makes things a lot easier to work with, especially when we're gonna cut out geometry like we're gonna do next. So that's a pretty easy way to get that transition. Now you can do, you can see it's not perfectly smooth here. Um, and that all has to do with uh, the, the, those lines that we were drawing. So, um, so you can work with them like this to me is great because I just do a little bit of cleanup with a chisel by hand or with a file and it looks awesome. It looks exactly like it should look. So that's how I do it. Um, maybe you do it differently. Uh, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to know about it. Um, so if you guys have any ideas, um, let me know. Um, we're also going to be doing this uh, neck angle on the, on the, uh, on the ES335 here and uh, cutting out that neck pocket. Um, it, it seems like we're close to done here, but we're actually not. So, um, actually we still have to build, and this is my favorite part. We have to make a bunch of jigs and templates, um, in fusion before we head out to the machine and start cutting. So, um, and that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to make, I'm actually going to side, I'm going to bend the sides on this. Um, the guitars, the way these were made were generally um, glued laminates for the top, back, and sides. Um, but we're going to do it uh, the way I like to do it. <laughs> so uh, that's the plan. Um, if you guys have any ideas or anything, uh, I'm happy to hear them. If you see a way that I could do something better, um, please let me know. I love that, um, the help that we got um, when we were cutting this block to the shapes. Um, or, oh, we actually have some more work to do on those too. Um, but thanks everyone for watching. 
Um, thanks, Weedy Guitar Studio, for checking in with us while we're live streaming. And uh, all of you guys watching in the future, um, we'd love to see your comments. Uh, definitely like and subscribe. If you want to get a copy of this file, along with the violin and the Selmer guitar and uh, mandolin and a bunch of other files that I have up on my Patreon page, it's $1 a month, so not very expensive. Um, come and check that out. And thanks, guys. Have a good day.